we ought to have as researchers a broad understanding of the political and social and cultural context within which these texts are produced. And I don't personally see the point in looking at media texts unless you're going to arrive at some kind of judgment as to its quality. But you, have, you absolutely have to be constructive because many of the criticisms that we make of media texts and, and of journalism, for example, are with the, the good health of journalism industry at its heart. Many journalists are, are working with, working, um, with within organisations that oblige them to produce certain forms of news to follow particular sorts of agendas. And I think we're actually doing them and the trade a service to, to discuss this in a critical way, but also to acknowledge the, um, to acknowledge the, the professional limitations and, uh, and the, 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 the professional practices and how, the vo how, the, how all of those contribute to producing news in a particular way. But I think, it, I think we should take, our, take the body of research that we've produced and that we have access to to be able to make, to make structured, well-informed, but yes, normative judgments on, on, on journalism. I have no problems with normativity at all. Obviously, if you're going to spend two, three, four years or whatever studying something, whether it's text or an organisation, then the findings that you've come up with should be able to frame what you say. And if in that you are being critical of organisations or journalists or whoever, then that stems from your research. Now, obviously, you can interpret your findings in a different way. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest and reflect the evidence and you have to accept that your view of how the evidence is put together and the results may be different from a different interpretation and someone else mm -hmm. but as long as you're true to yourself and to the evidence and you can you can stand up and ensure that any criticism made of you is properly responded to I don't think there's a problem there as long as we have a conversation about these things that's mm -hmm. fine I think if you don't have a conversation about these things, that becomes problematic. In certain areas that we've been talking about, media studies, journalism and so on, sometimes there isn't that conversation, which leads to misunderstandings. But I think it's the importance to have that conversation, to be able to explain where you're coming from, why you see the world you do, the way you do, and to then try and persuade someone else that that's the way it is. I think the problem may, may be if you start try and make judgments on the basis of no evidence. Mm. That's the problem. It's a prejudice. It's not something that you've looked at over a period of time, that's been assessed by colleagues, that's been put out there and it's like the scientists you were talking about, that's been tried again and again and again. And if all the evidence points in one way, you can't turn around and say, well, it's actually the world looks different. Mm -hmm. the, the notion of discussion is very important. I mean, one, one thing that would concern me, for, for example, about British media at the moment is the way that, is the way that refugees, immigrants and asylum seekers are covered. Um, I, I'm, I'm deeply disturbed by the tone uh, that, that, some of the, that, that some of the coverage takes. It would, I would see it as my job to pursue, um, analyse that coverage, leave, lay the evidence before people, but provided, I'm ex provided that I'm uh, transparent in the way that I do that, if anyone wants to take an opposing view, I'll happily, dis happily enter into a discussion with them. And I think actually the discussion over that coverage, whichever direction you decide to come from, is itself, is itself a productive thing. Because it then allows us to, to go, it allows us to go through the issues involved and allows us to get to a proper, informed, mature discussion about journalistic responsibility. You must always go back to the data you've collected, the examples you use to justify your arguments, um, the studies you've made. It's not when we are being critical, when a social scientist is being critical, comes up with a particular point of view. Hopefully it's because they've looked at something, said this is what the evidence says to me, this is how I've arrived at my evidence. If someone else wants to dispute that, that's fine, that's the method I've used. And that's important as a method in social sciences generally. I think where social sciences can be problematic is if people are pretending they've produced something that is coherent, rational, justified by looking at the evidence when it isn't. But then we can have a conversation about that and hopefully through that process you can begin to see the, the problems. That's why we have journals, that's why we write books. We should be happy to have a full argument backing up the position that we've taken go into the public domain. 
to be scrutinised by others. And in fact, in the scrutiny, I, I enjoy nothing more, for example, than people coming back and telling me where my arguments have fallen short. Because that way, when I go in to develop it the next time, it will be all the better for the discussion that's taking place. And that's, but we as academics should be, should be robust in the, in, the, in the contributions that we offer to that discussion, but it should be evidence-based. And, be, and, it, and it should be open to disagreement. One of the things you notice in the Anglo-American context is that the least reflective organisations are media organisations. They're the one set of organisations that don't look at themselves and say, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong, is our work being accepted in this way or that way. And I think it's important, just as we have a process by which our work is assessed, it's important that they have the opportunity to discuss those things as well and they don't reflect very much on themselves at all. That's true, I mean, and I absolutely accept that. The one, of course, we always have to understand the, the position that media professionals come from, and media organisations increasingly have very little time to be self-critical. As, 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 um, as academics involved in journalism education, we know the environment for journalists now is much more competitive, much busier than it used to be. Um, a book written by Nick Davis a number of years ago discussed the number of articles that a journalist is, is expected to produce on a daily basis. It's very difficult to, to keep that workload going while at the same time having the time to step back and say should I be doing this the way that I'm doing it? Should I be discharging my duty? May, may, may I improve the work that I do? You know, if, I may, to think outside the box is very, very difficult when you're when, you, when you're writing four or five articles you know, in the space, space of a few hours. I, I, I accept that, although I, I, I think, that's a, it, to some extent, I think that's an excuse because the comment about not being reflexive was one you could have made 30 years ago when the situation was much better. I, I, I just think perhaps journalism does need to do a bit more work looking at itself and it's more difficult to do now, but academics are finding it hard to do work as well, so we're under pressure in different ways. I, I do think journalists then and now could have done a lot more to look at, at what they did.